What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. I am ironically wearing my Intellivision gear for this episode because it's very fitting, just like these clothes. So the other day on my YouTube channel, I posed a question to you guys on what you felt the Intellivision Amico would be valued at if it were to be sold via a third party or like eBay website, Craigslist, or even so far as Heritage Auctions. Now you're probably wondering why I have pictures of the Nintendo PlayStation up on my screen right now. I was, I was doing a little bit of research just for, for context of this because the answers for that poll are all over the map. If it's your first time to jail, hit that subscribe button and bell for notifications so you do not miss an upload. Also, check out smashjt.com. So yeah, the Intellivision Amico saga, the the saga that just refuses to die, and let's be honest, it's it's entertaining. We all know it is. And I feel like with context historically with video games comes fun questions and crazy situations that have arisen over the decades. And one of those was when the official Heritage Auctions put up for sale one of the last Nintendo PlayStations known to exist. Apparently there were 200 of these? I don't know how many of them are still surviving, I don't know how many people actually have them, but this one version of the Nintendo PlayStation sold in March of 2020 for $300,000. And that's just the bid. Additionally to that are heritage auction fees totaling about $80,000 in addition. So you're looking at about $380,000 to the winning bidder who apparently is the co-founder of Oculus. Somebody with too much money on their hands and they want to collect video games. More power to them. And with the Intellivision Amico, obviously it's not on the pantheon of Super Nintendo pairing up with Sony to create the next console and having it falling apart and having a storied history there. But Intellivision does have a storied history. It might not be the prettiest, but, but it <laughs> definitely has a history. And, and I pose the question of if there was only one unit for whatever reason, using our make-believe world, that only one Intellivision Amico came to market. The customer version, the final production unit, and then they're just like, you know what? Screw it, we're, we're closing doors, we're not doing this, we can't do this. It's not worth it, we're, we're getting our knees chopped off from the Sadesh loan, we can't afford to make these consoles. Whatever it ends up being, just there's just one console that comes out what would it be worth? Now, I don't want to take into account the pilot units that were given out to some of the shills for testing purposes. We're going to limit this just to saying that, okay, those other units do exist, but we'll say that there is one customer version available with box, sealed, you know, everything brand new from from a factory line that was like literally their test unit from the factory to, to check the design specs to make sure that they were gonna mass produce these. So they made one of them, they wanted to run it by in television and then they stopped. So bear with me here. Okay, so that one unit is available and it gets sent to, I, I don't know, pa Pat and Ian. What is it valued at? Say they don't want it. Say say they're like, no, this is this is funny, but I'd rather have money for it and they, they put it up on eBay. What would it be worth? Would it be worth like under 500 bucks? Would it be worth under 10,000? Would it be up more than that? It's an interesting question because when it comes to one of a kind video game items with a story behind them, the bids can start to get pretty ridiculous and it only you gotta remember it only takes two people to make a bid get ridiculous you could have everyone in the world laughing at them but two people in this world that are hardcore game collectors specifically to retro gaming specifically to in television for whatever reason and they just have to have this in their collection what would that bid get up to? If if I had to guess, because I'm not going to make this video without giving you my thoughts on it, 
I think it would get pretty nuts. I, I genuinely do. Uh, I Obviously, it would go for way more than it's worth. But that's just like a what it's worth to you. I think a lot of people would forget the context of just having the ability to say, I own a piece of gaming history that no one else has, that other people have a lot of curiosity about, have a lot of interest in, would have loved to be able to play this thing. There's there's something to be said for that. I mean, the, the Nintendo PlayStation doesn't even play CDs. Ben Heck couldn't even get the thing to work. You you can't figure it out to even make it play the games. The Super Famicom games work on it, but that's another story. But it doesn't work completely. So someone paid $380,000 for a piece of plastic that is history. Now you can say it's just a piece of plastic, but hell, the, the Mona Lisa is, is just a piece of paint on parchment. Like, People value things for the story behind them, not what it actually is. If that were the case, there'd be no value in gold because who cares? It's just a shiny rock. The point is what people place value in. So anyways, back to my thoughts on what it would be worth. I would, if I <laughs> put, put my Pawn Stars hat on here, if I were at the Pawn Stars shop, and someone walked in with this, and they're like, what do you think this is valued at? And they're like, bring in our expert, Smash JT. He, he, he knows the entire television saga. What's he gonna say about it? I, I would give a little bit of a backstory about the complete catastrophe behind the scenes, but then I would acknowledge the value in the history of the story. And I would, I would imagine that it would go for for over a hundred thousand dollars, I I genuinely believe that. Now this is like after Intellivision is through insolvency, bankruptcy. They they're completely gone. There's no way another Intellivision Amico could be made. The trademarks shot to hell. There's like this is just guaranteeing that it's the only unit ever in existence besides those pilot units, and we're assuming those pilot units weren't functioning perfectly or properly and weren't customized specifically to uh, customer, a customer, a user. I, I'm, I'm thinking like maybe there's 15 Amicos out there. This one officially, say it even gets signed by Tommy Tallarico, which would probably decrease the value of it. But my point being, this would be the only one, what the value of it would be. I, I genuinely feel like it would be over $100,000, which is funny because that's what Intellivision would need to be able to start manufacturing some of these consoles. Because <laughs> God only knows what they did with the other rocket ship fuel that they burnt through over the past three years. But yeah, I thought it was an interesting question. I, I, I'm fascinated to hear what you guys think because like I said, the, the game industry, collector industry specifically, is a fascinating topic and it can get pretty wild when people start bidding against each other. And be just, I don't know, I would, I would be interested to see, just for the fascination of what, what someone values this thing at, what it would get to. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Oh, damn it, I missed the question. Oh, yeah, all oh, the tracks. I always forget about that flag, but it's actually fun of it, you know.